This is a HeadGum Podcast. Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine, with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit Take care of dot com. The promo code is date me. What a treat. You'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time. Bye bye. Why won't you date me? Why won't you date me? Why won't you date me? date me it's a podcast where i explore why i'm single and why i can't find a boyfriend even though i love you know tickling taints and sucking on balls and if you want i'll finger your butthole i have no qualms about that my guest today (laughs) is a very wonderful man his name is warren burke He's wearing a red jacket and he's got shoes on. He's got a white shirt and he's here in the studio. All within my melanin skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's black if you can't hear it through your ears. This is what a black man sounds like. Yes, and this is what a black woman sounds like. Sometimes, Sometimes people do not think I'm black. Really? Because of my voice. Oh, that's yes, nice. yes. I wonder, you know how in some black voices you can hear it though? Like, oh, he's got that deep raspy. He must be like, ethnic, yes, you know. And then sometimes there'll be like a commercial on the radio where it's like, Dayton, why won't you get car insurance? Girl, <laughs> you know I've been trying all week. <laughs> yeah, like, and it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I guess <laughs> like, those okay, are black yeah, people. Yeah, there's black people. I hear it now. Okay, great. Because in voiceover, sometimes they'll be like, Nicole, can you sound a little blacker? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what that means. I think you're talking about regionalisms because if you go, you know, to certain places, everybody sounds the same. True. true. So you saying sound blacker is just wildly offensive. <laughs> Let them get more specific, like Ugh. more like Southern Florida. Yeah. If you could do like um, Camden, New Jersey. Camden, New Jersey. Then I'm like, oh, OK. I know it. Camden, New Jersey. I know it. That's <laughs> why. Uh, or like less Valley Girl or something because people are like, you sound kind of like a Valley Girl. I'm like. I don't know. I sound like the white people I grew up with. Like, right. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> we real. all, where I live, we all sound like all the black people there, all the white people there, the Asian people, all of us. We are just like, hello, we're from Jersey. No. <laughs> Everybody sounds like that. Even like us, hello. <laughs> oh, hello. I am going to construction today, sweetheart. I almost wish there was a town in America where everyone was like, hello. <laughs> like, I wish in Orlando everyone sounded like Mickey Mouse. 
Like, oh, oh, oh so Mega Mouse is in Holland. That's what we all sound like. Oh, 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 oh. So I, uh, I went to work today, and can you believe it? Tim comes in with a cake, and I, he knows that I'm gluten free, and oh, I don't understand. Oh, man, that's terrible. <laughs> Wait, why doesn't? Why don't people sound like Mickey Mouse all the time? Seriously, yeah, like just whatever. That'd be so. A here's life. a question, Warren: Are you single? I am. I am a single man. And are you on? T- you are on Tinder. I am on Tinder. And do you? How is Tinder working out for you? Well, Nicole, it's so funny that you you bring this up uh-huh. because Tinder it, it was, you know, to be honest, it's not the best, and it's because like uh, so in my. You mm-hmm. know, I understand the Tinder thing. You got to put up some great photos, a poppy bio that makes you stand out from the rest. And mm-hmm. your first message has got to stand out, which is kind of weird because, Nicole, we have matched. We did match on Tinder. We matched. And Sorry. And yes. you came into an audition. Yes. And I was. <laughs> We're going straight to it. Sorry. I was reading with you. Okay. And I don't know how it came up. It came up pretty organically. And you were like, oh, we matched on Tinder. And yeah. months went by. I messaged you. Yeah. And months went by. I got to, yeah. It's it's the funniest It's the funniest thing that happened. I, I will never forget it. Because Wait, it was, let's see if I can actually find it, which is something I should have done before today. I'll have to let you know, at this point, I have deleted Tinder. So hopefully I'm still popping up in there. But while you look for this, I got to let the people know that. Let them okay. know. Let them know. It's December of 2016. Nicole mm-hmm. comes up. I'm like, whoa, look at Nicole. She you knows she has all these nice pictures or whatever. One's got to be a little raunchy because it is Nicole. <laughs> um, and so I'm like, oh, wow, it's Nicole Byer. Yeah, I know her comedy a little bit, seen her around UCB. And yeah, sure, why not? Let's just swipe right. Guys, we match. What? Mind blown. So I was like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I match with this amazing wonderful independent empowered comedian who's taken over hollywood and so i was like yeah let's uh like you know what do you say what do you say to this but now this woman who's doing all this so uh okay i know um hey nicole uh love your comedy uh so crazy that we matched <laughs> dot 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 right uh-huh. and you're waiting you're waiting you're waiting and uh guys this is december uh nicole doesn't give me a response in december doesn't give me a response in january doesn't give me a response in February. Doesn't give me a response in March. April, still no response. <laughs> May comes around and we get a response. Yay! <laughs> Nicole has answered Warren and uh-huh. she says, oh my God, thanks. <laughs> what? Guys, let me explain something. If you ever decide that you want to hit somebody back six months later, what, what, what are we doing here? What, what's, the, what's the purpose now? Now, I know you got your show and everything. You're doing your own thing, your podcast, everything. Yes. You pop it, but now, come on. Six months? Uh-uh. I mean, I'm not. You're amazing. You're great. I, I don't even. I'd scratch my head if it was even Halle Berry to do something like that. I'm like, ah, okay. Halle Berry. I feel misused. Here is probably what happened okay so we matched and then you said i like your comedy comedy great so whenever someone says comedy just straight off the bat i'm like ah are they like a fan and are they gonna fangirl if i meet up with them Oh, or are they a comic who's gonna like pick my brain if we go out or like I don't or are they gonna just tell me that their like girlfriend likes my stuff or their sister likes my stuff and they're like just stopping by to give you a compliment and that is it. <laughs> what? Because that's happened. That happens a lot. So like I was in Portland doing shows, swiping, swiping, swiping. My friend Tess is like, You can fuck someone in my house. I don't care. <laughs> the kids go to sleep. <laughs> it's fine. And I was like, great. So then I was swiping. This guy messages me. He's like, kind of cute. And he was like, I love your comedy. I think you were so funny. And I was like, oh, thanks. Uh, He's like, do you live in Portland? I said, no, I don't live in Portland. I'm just here for the weekend. I'm doing uh, five shows at Helium. Uh, Yeah, whatever, whatever. And he was like, oh, cool. Maybe me and my uh, me and my sister will like roll on through. She loves you. She's going to freak out that we matched on Tinder. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. And I was like, what? Oh. Um, uh, okay. I was like, and then I didn't, and then he never said anything else. So I was like, oh, he got excited because he knew that his sister liked me, matched with me, told me that she liked my comedy, and that's it. That's all he wanted to say. And it's like, it's like one of those things where sometimes, 
um, or not sometimes, it's like why people follow people on Instagram and then will comment on their pictures yeah. to be like, I want to have an interaction with you because I like you. And the same thing happens on Tinder. So oh, that's why, I, that's probably okay. the reason why I didn't respond. Listen, the first Tinder message has always baffled me, which is why I'm also was deciding to get on Bumble because, hey, for the first time in my life, the pressure of having to make that first message mm -hmm. is off of me now. I can let the woman feel what that's like. And so many messages from so many women like, oh my God, is this what this feels like? Like, yeah, this shit sucks. We don't want to do this. That anxiety that you feel in your chest when you're about to fucking throw up and like, oh my God, she's going to think I'm a rapist or some weirdo or something like that. Just for saying, hello, you're beautiful. Like, get the fuck away from me. Like, I will say this. Don't say I'm beautiful. I already fucking know I'm beautiful. Okay. You don't have to tell me I'm beautiful. But Nicole, uh, this, is a, this is a great segue because why? I just read this weird thing, five love languages. I'm pretty sure you're familiar. Have you heard of it? No. You haven't heard of the five love languages? Wait, what? Like French, Your listeners are Italian. tripping out right now. They're like, Nicole doesn't know about the five love languages? The five love languages was written by this guy. Totally forgot his name. It's a terrible time to bring it up. And I don't know the uh -huh. other. Oh. But there's five love languages. Words of affirmation, touch, receiving gifts. Acts of service, which means you like somebody doing shit for you. Yeah, but I don't need that from some dude I don't fucking know. No, but you identify what your love language is. Therefore, once you oh. identify what it is, you now know how you so, receive So, okay, what are they again? Love. What are the love languages? You got words of affirmation. Words. I love you, Nicole. You That shit um, feels no. amazing, okay? Acts of service. Hey, Nicole, don't worry about it. I'm going to do the dishes and make up the bed. You just uh -huh. sit on down, all right? Touch. Ugh, we already know what that is. Okay. You know what I mean? Gifts, which is, it doesn't have to be like something large, like a yes. huge car or something. Just like, hey, here's like a, some flowers. Okay. That makes the, it like fills you up. Mm -hmm. And then quality time. Now, I don't understand ah, this. One. Okay, that's my sister. That's your sister? She's just like, there are people who. My sister can literally sit, sit in a corner. Exactly. As quiet. long as she's in a room with me. She's like, we've bonded. And exactly. I'm like, bitch, we didn't do nothing. Exactly. Which is, it, that baffles me. Like, we need to do yeah. something in she order for She came us. to visit me. And didn't have a single plan. So then I was like, well, I don't want to take you to like the Santa Monica Pier for you to get down there and go, this is nice. And like not enjoy <laughs> it. So then I was like, let's go to the Broad. So we went to the Broad and she was just like, this is nice. And I was like, Jesus Christ. And then she was just like happy to sit and watch like diners, drives and yeah. dives or whatever the fuck that guy diners theory and, shit. Yeah. She was oh, like, I just want to sit next to you and be near you. Yeah. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I can't. I like for people to do shit for me. Yeah. Acts of service. Me too. Number like, one. It's just do like. do everything. When you do something for me, it's just like, it does, it like, I, because it, it shows me that you love me. Like, you care enough for, to take this task on. Wait, maybe not even. Hug me down. Words, I'm touch. bossy. Are you bossy? Okay. I, I just want someone to listen to me. Just when I say, don't do that. <laughs> Just don't do it. So maybe you like quality time too. No. No? I don't want to sit and stare at you. You're fucking kidding me? We got to do something. Okay. So we know it's not quality time. There's a quiz. So even if you don't want to read the book, just go online. Take oh, a, there's a type quiz? Type in five love languages quiz. Do the quiz. It takes like like 10 minutes. And then it'll rank because you we all like these things. Well, no matter what we say. Even though we don't okay. like this, we kind of like it. But there's a certain percentage of what is more. And then it'll rank the percentages for you. And then Okay. Five love languages quiz quiz mm -hmm. i just felt language is the wildest way <laughs> it like was very wrong language is one of those words that when okay you get after i'm gonna G, do it do it later um but do it so what is yours mine number one is words affirmation ah. i'm an actor i like to feel validated you did a good job that feels good also you get to which my second one is acts of service i like people to do shit for me. Ah, interesting yeah. i do not like <laughs> affirmation but i also it's weird so like if we're gonna talk about it just in general like in life i don't need someone to tell me i'm beautiful i don't need someone to tell me i'm funny i don't need someone i don't need anyone to tell me shit i already know yeah it's yeah. just it's not necessary yeah what's necessary is for someone to go "Ooh, your new hair looks good or dang six pairs of lashes why and i'm like because <laughs> i love it uh, just like noticing the new things I do, that's what I need. That's a fine line. I need line. you to pay attention to the new things I'm doing. I know it's but a fine don't, line. It's okay, so don't compliment you. Don't say how amazing you are. But in the essence that there is something new that comes about within you, do uh -huh. comment on that mm -hmm. and make sure it's positive, but not complimenting? You can compliment as long as it's something I don't know. If I'm wearing a new wig and I'm not sure about it, 
Tell me if it's good. Oh, come on now. How how would I know that you're not sure? I don't know. If I come downstairs and I start tossing my hair, men say, say something about my wig. Okay, okay. I'm a very Men are dumb. We're woman. really dumb. I can't tell you how dumb we are. We are the most literal. Like, we literally need to, you need to spell it out for us. Because we're not mind readers. We're already t- putting so much attention elsewhere. You know, I'm black, trying not to get shot. You know, sorry. Yeah, that's all it's another, tough. Yeah, trauma. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, we're we're just trying to, you know, trying yes. to understand what we can do to, to fix it or to, mm-hmm. to help in a relationship. Well, I think men aren't forthcoming with feelings and mm. information. That's a, that's a, that's a, I, when I hear women say this specifically on Tinder dates, I hear this all the time. It's just like, what? I hate that this, I am so expressed. Again, words of affirmation. Sure. So expressive, so vulnerable. He, it just needs to be said. So, okay. It's like, great. I know you're into me, whatever, whatever, whatever. We go on like four dates. <laughs> right. It's great. Great. And then you like ghost someone. I feel like men can just be like, women do this too. Women that, okay, ghost. I was about, I was ready to come right back at you now. I think people in general need to go, hey, this was bad for X, Y, and Z. Like, you're not hurting someone's feelings. Thank you. Maybe you can learn a little bit from it, Thank or you, you just go, oh, okay, I was feeling something that was wrong. Right. It's a little feedback. I don't know that I'm doing the same thing. Help me in the fact that we just went out. We just had this lovely dinner. You probably didn't have to worry about it. Give me the fine courtesy of saying, hey, this is why we're not going to link up again. Yes. Uh, Dating is like auditioning. And auditions (laughs) suck. You prep. You make sure you look and smell good. You're on your best behavior. You're trying to say something that gets them to laugh up top. And then you go through with the audition. And then you say, thank you. I hope we hear. I hope I hear from you again. I would love to, you know, go out on another date or like. Get married, <laughs> like book yeah. the role. Yeah. Uh, and then you don't hear anything, weeks, days, months, and you're like, oh, I, I guess they didn't like they me. They didn't like me. But, but then, then you they, hear, but they... maybe we want to test you, and you're like, oh, <laughs> they did like me. And then you test, and then you're like, well, maybe they will give it to me. Maybe I will, you know, get a ring put on it. And you don't hear anything, weeks, months, and then you see it on TV, and it's a woman who looks exactly like you, and you're like, cool, okay. So you did like me, but you didn't want me, and I don't know. It's like when you go on a date with a dude who ends up dating someone who looks just like you, and you're like, okay, then it's like personal, and it's something about me. Oh, my God. Wow. But that, yeah, like dating story of my is life. Yeah. auditioning. Yes. That's and like, a, and romantically and career-wise, that's exactly That's all you're doing. You're just doing. asking people to be like, am I okay? <laughs> yeah. Do you am like I me? Is this good a enough? Good person? Am I funny and talented? I suck your dick. Which, oh, like, money, you please. would say in any of these situations, yes. you're like, a network show, I'll suck your dick. Uh, marriage, I'll suck your dick. <laughs> like, you're just constantly like, I'll do it. I'll do anything. Anytime you can put suck, sucking of the dick on the table, it's, it's, suck it. it's, it's available. It's just so, it's <laughs> dating in LA, I think, also is just like oh, hard. Yeah, it's Everyone's so bad. a fucking actor. Everyone has goals. Everyone wants to talk about their goals. Yeah. Even in a fucking Uber, people are like, Th- I do other things. And I'm like, I don't care. You're driving me around. Right. I don't have to listen to a cab driver be like, I have other things going. No, you're driving me. Just drive. Right, right. Cab drivers would not be that engaged. Me personally, I feel like dating in L.A. is just, it's it hasn't been, it, it has not been the best thing. I knew it was off to a bad start. I went on, it was like my first Tinder date mm-hmm. specifically. We met up, we went to this Pinchy's Tacos on Sunset. It was like, all right, cool. This is great. You know, getting mm-hmm. some tacos. We're very affordable. Uh, we get there, and um, I guess I get there before her. She comes in, like, hey, what's going on? We're talking. Mm-hmm. I'm from Chicago. She's from Detroit. Like, oh, this, we're vibing. She stops the conversation midway. She's like, hey, I'm sorry. I hate to interrupt. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, do you, uh, is your family like from like some sort of wealth? Of some sort, like like have a background <laughs> of wealth of any sort, and I'm like, uh-huh. what? Uh, no, not not really. They, my parents, they work in medicine a little bit, but not mm-hmm. I'm, nothing crazy. Like, oh, okay, I was just just curious. I thought she was doing a bit, but like, no, she was dead serious. Uh-huh. And so we're still talking and everything, and we're and we're going. And she stops me again. And was like, hey, again, sorry to stop you. And this was earlier in the year last year. It's just uh-huh. like I'm really trying to like set certain intentions and goal for myself, and I'm trying to hold myself to a certain standard. So like. If you're not in like a certain like 
bracket, like a tax bracket. I'm not necessarily sure that we can probably continue. And it's nothing against you. It's just like, I'm just trying to be upfront about my, and this was early in the year when it's like new year, new me, you know what I mean? And yeah. she's trying to get herself together. And, and I was like, <laughs> I just started laughing. I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I do not have the uh, load of money to just shower. Only is like, That's... and she left, she left. She ended up leaving and I'm eating these tacos. Like what the fuck just happened? Like it was the weirdest thing I ever experienced in my life. Specifically that in LA. is wild. Yeah. To be like, are you in a certain tox bracket? Yeah. Is she black? Was she black? She was black. Ugh. She was the beautiful Ugh. lightest of shade. Shout out to <laughs> light skin. Uh, no, no, no shade. Um, just Ugh. hey, you guys make it really difficult. Man, you know? that's wild. I mean, to be honest, I don't want to date a broke dude, but <laughs> that's real. <laughs> yes. It's real. I don't want to date a broke guy. It's very real. I travel so much for work. So, like, if I'm going to be in Denver for the weekend doing shows, I want you to be able to come to Denver to hang out with me. Oh, I got you. Because we yeah. can go on a hundred mini vacations a year. So, that's, like. I mean, yeah, that's understood. But it's like, I mean, date one, though? Like, out date, the gate? Date one <laughs> is wild. And then to ask about your parents' money. I know. that's like, how, That really got me. It's crazy because she is she, like. What is it like long goal? They're going to die soon and we get the money. <laughs> right. Are we good? Like just as insurance, just in yeah, case. Like that's wild to me. But like if a dude yeah. has a bunch of roommates and like has a shitty job and like doesn't know what he wants to do. I can't. That makes I sense. don't have time for it. Yeah. I don't want to go on dates with you and then have to like pay for everything. I don't like I had one guy who I was like. Come to New York. I'm in New York for a fucking month, and I'm miserable. I want you to come see me. And he was like, okay. And then he's like, ugh, I don't know. I don't know if, the, if I have the money. And I was like, I'll pay for it. Oh, and then yeah. I had a hotel room that was, like, uh, paid for by the production. Yeah. And I was like, and you'll sleep in my hotel room. So it was like a fucking free trip. And it was just like, and then, I mean, the whole relationship imploded before he could come out. But it was just, it was so dumb that I had to be like, I'll pay for it. Yeah. You can use my miles. Yeah. It just, yeah, it's like, yeah. If you are poor, but you have goals, and I can see that you are making steps to the goals, okay. Right. I can deal with that. Right. I can work with that. Like, if you like talk about, like, it's just like dating a poor dude, sometimes they get too comfy. They're just like, oh, you'll just pay for this. <laughs> And you stop saying thank you, and you stop pretending that you'll pay me back. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. But on the on the other end, like I'm not, and it sounds so chauvinistic for me to say like dating a broke girl is like, it, it's weird because like broke women can be like, you're supposed to do this. Oh yeah, you're the man. So uh -huh. like, aren't you supposed to pay for me? Uh -huh. And it's just like, I mean, I no guess. bitch. And we'll like use my masculinity against me. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like. This is what, you know, manhood is, right? I mean, you've got this. Mm -hmm. So you asked me out. So why? I always, like, do you pay half or do you pay for always, all? Always, always pay for it. Always. It, and I don't why? want, even when I don't, because it hurt. I don't why? know. I can't. I can't. I don't know what else to do. My friend, he told me a new thing. He was like, hey, this is what you need to do. You need to take him out for coffee and already have a date in, uh, planned out. That way, uh -huh. based off the coffee, if you're still feeling her, you guys can go ahead and go do the right ah, thing. Ah, smart, smart, smart. I always, whenever the bill, well, I do a weird thing when the bill comes. I yeah. always grab it and go, guess how much? It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Price is right rules when you're in a group. Whoever is the closest without going over wins. Wins what? Nothing. Because we all just pay the bill. <laughs> it's just something stupid that I like to do. So, like, I always grab it first. So then I always, like, throw down a card. Because, like, I'm not going to make you pay for everything. But then it's like, if you, like, get the movie tickets or whatever, like, that's sweet. That's, right. like, nice. Yeah. Uh. I'm, I don't understand why a man has to pay for it. I don't. Nicole, At this point girl. in time in 2017, like, we all out here grinding. Jesus. We come all on, have bank come accounts. On. We all have debit cards. Thank you. Just like, it, and a dude paying for a meal doesn't mean he likes Jesus. you. It just means he's been taught to do that. But then it's just like, I don't want you to be the woman that's like, no, I am independent. No man pays for me. I open right. my own door. Like, if a dude opens a door for you, yay. That's nice. Right. 
like if he's paying for me, like whatever. He, like what I would like is down the line, surprise me with a trip. Okay. So you surprise like gifts. Me. So you like gifts. I do. I, yeah, I like gifts. Uh, but like down the line, like I don't need you to front shit up top. Yeah. Like I just want to get to know you, get it going, get a good rapport. And then it becomes what's important to me is when I'm close to somebody it's like we don't keep track of money. I pay for this um, sometimes. You pay for this sometimes. Like you pay for like me and my best oh, friends yeah. this year. We don't. I don't. We have like a running tab. I have no idea how much money we owe each other. Yeah. But it's just like give and take, give and take. Like my old roommate Jen. I have like we years, years and years and years of us just being like, oh, I think you paid for that last time. I'll pay for this now. Or I don't know. Like it's just like my money's her money. That's like. That matters more to me, like getting to know someone and then just like being like, our money is ours. Yeah. We're doing this. Yeah. You don't have to fucking pay for my goddamn steak dinner because you know this bitch got steak and lobster and, <laughs> and a dessert. You know this bitch's bill's a hundred dollars. Right. I'll pay for it. You don't right. have to pay for it. Uh, uh. Nicole, Jesus, where you come from, girl? They need I, to start making more Nicoles because well, uh, they're not out here. They're not out in the world. They're not out in L.A. specifically. It's honestly common sense. A dude paying for a meal that's 20, 30 bucks doesn't mean he's going to, like, take care of you. Thank you. What can I do? The 20 I would say opening a door is nicer. Opening a door and then, like, kind of holding the smile on your back and, like, pushing you in the doorway. Door, that's okay. That's nice. How do you feel about the car? You don't have to get out. Okay. You can, like, open the door from the inside. That's, like, a nice gesture. But after you do it once, you never have to do it again. Okay. I know that you cared once. <laughs> as long as I know you cared one time. If you try one time, I'm good. <laughs> Just one. If you look nice one time, I'm good. Okay. Like, you don't have to... Because after, like, a month or two, it's like, I don't know, we're all dumpster people. Like, yeah. we, what are we pretending? What's the end goal? Yeah. One of these days, I will see you shitting in a toilet, and I'll right. be like, ugh, exactly. this is bad. So you're going to hear me I fart at like some this. point. Like, I get bloated when I yeah. drink a lot of beer, so the, a fart will be coming. Yes, and I think it's just like, the sooner you cut down on, like, the presentation of it all, the better, right. for me, at least. For sure. I don't know, and then I just, I just don't believe in, like, archaic things, like, I make my own money, so like I don't need a dude to provide for me. Right. And I know that that's probably going to emasculate a lot of dudes, but that's just where I'm at. Uh, why, what is emasculating about that? Well, some men like to take care of women. Oh, yeah, they are. I've actually recently, I went to a wedding, and I saw my ex there, and she's dating uh, a guy who's like that. And he's just mm -hmm. like, my woman got it. But they're like assholes, though. It's like... As a woman, I get why you would want that, you know, mm -hmm. but like those guys are just like they think women are beneath them because they're doing that, you yes. know, they're like in a, like a subconscious state. Mm -hmm. And that's so weird to interact with dudes like they were just kind of like, no, my woman's at home cooking. Yeah. Duh, the first time a man ordered for me at a restaurant, I was like, I can talk. I swear <laughs> I can talk. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> I, I, well, I chose what I wanted, then he started saying it. I could tell you. Like, it, that, it was, I was floored. And I don't remember how old I was when that happened, but I was like, whoa. And then it happened a couple more times, and I was like, I guess I just have to talk first. As soon as he comes over, I have to go, I want this. I, it's just, I don't. Oh, the fish and chips. Fish, fish and chips. chips. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. Nicole, that's not what you said earlier. That's yeah, but, what you said That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I once got mistaken for a hooker. Okay. I was out to dinner with my manager because I was moving here and we were like celebrating it. And we were at Ruby Foo's in Times Square. And I don't even know if he remembers this, but he like ordered for me. And I was like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, this is weird. I don't, I'm, I can talk. And then I was like, can I have wine? And he was like, you can have wine. And then the server was like, oh, you're going to get wine tonight? And I was like, what's <laughs> happening? And he was like, I'm sure you'll get a lot more tonight, too. And I was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, The oh. server said that, really? Yes. Oh, my God. And then I was like, oh, my word. And my manager was just like, <laughs> And I wanted to be like, I don't. Was he playing it up? I was like, I think he thinks we're, like, dating. And your manager's like, oh, I know. Well, well then well, later, uh he got the bill and i was like because this was like one of the first times we'd actually been out to eat because we've been working together for a little bit but like nothing was actually happening there was like no reason for us to like go out and celebrate yeah 
and the bill came and I was like, do I have to pay for any of this? <laughs> he was like, no. The, oh. comp- the, the company pays for it. Well, and funny. I was like, ooh, nice. <laughs> I love when people spend money on me. And the server's like, I'm sure he'll spend more money on you later. And I was like, <gasps> okay, server, you need to and back up. My manager was just like, <laughs> I I don't know what he thought was happening. Definitely. But I was like, this server definitely thinks I'm a hooker. I'm like a black woman with like a bad wig, and I'm with this like older white man. This server definitely thinks I'm a hooker. Uh, well, I mean, no, he did because then I went to this restaurant, Mastro's, here, uh-huh. and I literally saw a young woman in a bad wig with an older man who was just laughing at all the things he said that weren't funny. Wow! And I was like, this is definitely a hooker John situation. <laughs> Because she was like, can I get a to go bag? And I was like, bitch is hungry. She's trying to take everything she can from this restaurant. Oh, my God. Maestro's, have you, uh, have you ever had the um, lobster mashed yeah. potatoes? Oh, no. I thought you were talking about this the appetizer, the lobster that's like in fucking butter soup. And then yeah, they put a- fucking bread in it. And it's like garlic you gotta bread. got to get the mashed potatoes, though. That shit is amazing. And then the, uh, the butter cake. Oh, I haven't had the butter cake. Ooh! I can't remember what I had. You will have a. You will come so hard in that fucking oh restaurant. I swear God. to God, you have to. You will come so. Their you, food you is have no so clue. good. You will squirt all across ah, Maestro's ah, in yeah. Beverly Hills as ah, soon as you take a bite yeah, of that butter daddy cake. Daddy, butter cake. Mm, ah. exactly I mean, I swear. I only really come over one thing, and it's ooey gooey butter cake ice cream from Ample Hills Creamery. It's my favorite ice cream. Okay. Uh, they were in, they're in Brooklyn, and they started shipping on Amazon. And I legit thought about writing a letter to the company begging them to not ship on Amazon because I thought that they were expanding too quickly and that they, <laughs> would, they, would, they wouldn't be able to keep up with the demand that's putting them out of business. And I was like, I can't risk them going out of business. You went. And so she was like, you have to find a hobby you cannot or, write these people a so letter so you just went past like wonder a devoted customer to like consultant of restaurants yes. to let you know hey guys yes. your business model is not what you yes. think it is you need to stop while you're they ahead they keep opening shops and i'm like you expand too fast <laughs> and you're not keeping up the quality and the hype goes down then you're stuck with paying rent and you're not meeting your demand <sighs> Wow. I just got like really like upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally, I don't know. I'm like a cartoon character. No, it's great. The other day I thought I was falling and I, you know how people like in cartoons are like, <laughs> and they yeah. like wave their arms. Right. I thought I was falling and I like waved my arms. I was like, <laughs> yeah. but it turns out there was a wall literally behind me. And if I had fallen, I would have been fine. <laughs> Did, and then for you to complete, you were like, Phew! Yeah, more or that less. That was a close one. And so she, she was right there. She was like, what? <laughs> Suddenly a piano fell on Nicole's head. I mean, right I that. yeah, I'm just a little cartoon. I'm a little cartoon, baby. <laughs> um, So Tinder's not great for you. No, it's not. Bumble. Has Bumble been a better Bumble's experience? Bumble's booming, baby. It's like, it's when really? you see that number. I don't know what it is when you see that number of like people who already, this locked in number of ladies who already <sighs> want you. It's just like, validation. Is oh, here, you know what, what I mean? it shows you who oh, you already yeah. matched with. Okay, if you can, if you pay, it'll tell you exactly. Oh, who it okay. Is. But if you, it'll, it will like show them ghosts, but like saying it'll say like fifteen people today have oh have uh liked you. Now it's up to you to find out who those fifteen people are, and you can kind of go back and be like, oh, um, this person I said no to. All of a sudden, the number goes down. Oh, so yeah. So I am on Bumble, and I. Do men, do you know of men, you know how like dudes just swipe right on everybody on Tinder? My cousins like And that. then like weed them yeah. out. Oh, do yeah. you think there's dudes like that on Bumble? Yeah, I've watched my cousin just like swipe right to everybody. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you like, hey man, just gotta. Gotta get those numbers Gotta get up. those numbers. <laughs> it's so bad. And then also they're trying, you're trying to figure out who are the girls that said yes to you. So you can then be <sighs> in the position to choose like, hmm, who am I going to say yes or no to, you know? Because I have bad luck. I match a lot on Bumble, and uh-huh. then I'll message these dudes, these beautiful, witty things, and they won't, they won't respond. Well, I will say this. Bumble gives you 24 hours after, like, the first message yes. is given. So I know there's been, like, days where I've been, like, super busy. Mm-hmm. I've just been all over L.A., and then... 
I just haven't been able to respond. Now, we are given the option to reopen the conversation with a gif. Like, hey, sorry, like some cat, like, uh. I'm back or something like that. But, yeah, once it's like, I'm just like, uh, I'm sorry. You know? I mean, I, I don't know how to make dating easier. And, oh, this is another thing I will say. Women are like men on on these dating apps because you- now that they are behind that I've gotten in in touch with now that they're behind their phones they can say whatever the fuck they want and all all I got to do is unmatch you and then it's gone forever mm-hmm. so women will straight up say hey Warren I like how you look let's have sex tonight that's it <laughs> I really genuinely I don't want to get to know you I don't uh-huh. want to know what you're about where you're from uh-huh. you look like someone I want to have sex with let's just have sex are you cool with that and I'm like yeah what no like is this what this feels like yeah. <laughs> being at the bar and like yeah women deal with it's- well i do that sometimes sometimes okay see oh we found one I, y'all nicole oh, is <laughs> i mean it's not surprising i'm holding a giant dildo in my first you picture are. on tinder I, I use tinder <sighs> sometimes as a dating thing but then sometimes i'm like oh this person's like really dumb maybe i'll just fuck them tonight <laughs> so that's what i do it's either like uh, I'm talking to you. If it's going well, sure, I'll go out with you. We'll have a drink. We'll go to dinner. Right. But for the most part, it's like, Jesus Christ. Like, this other, this guy I slept with, like, a year ago, because <laughs> it's been a long time, yeah. uh, he was like, I'm a DJ in Pasadena. And I was like, that's a sentence I've never heard. <laughs> and he didn't get the joke. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know there was clubs in Pasadena. So... <laughs> he just what like... DJs are in Pasadena? If yeah, you're a DJ, why do you want to live in Pasadena? I don't know. Okay. But like he said dumb, like he was just so dumb. And I was just like, ugh, I'm just gonna fuck you. And there's this <laughs> other DJ guy at the botanical gardens? who you know, kept right using he kept using this like purple devil emoji for everything. <laughs> the smiling one or there's like a there's two. One's the, a smiling yeah, like the one. smiling one who's like, <laughs> I'm a little purple devil. And I was like, ugh, anybody who uses that emoji so liberally is so dumb. Wow. So I was like, I guess I just have to fuck you. His name was <laughs> Keon. His, he had like a weird fucking name. He was white, black? He was white. He was white. Yeah, I fuck a lot of white A white guys. guy with the name Keon. Keon. But Keon thought he was black. Oh, God. My favorite men are white men who think they're black. Yeah. And they're like, yo, girl, listen. This is what, like, your body's banging. I'm going to do it. I'm going to fuck your fat ass. Uh, Those guys, I always think, like, you've tried out the N-word once. Like, you oh, want to see what it tastes like you, in your mouth. You, not once. Every night before bed in the mirror. Mm. All right, here's, a, here's a, I'm a sign. I'm a sign. I'm a sign. Okay. Night, night. <laughs> night, night, shorty. Uh, <laughs> there is I this, see this guy so perfectly. He has got a, he's got a beater on, a white beater on. Yes, there was one guy who came over to my house wearing a white beater like baggy jeans and Tim's. And I was like, what are we in New York? Why the fuck are you wearing Tim's? We're in the desert. In like, LA? This yes. In LA. <laughs> and I've never seen an LA dude in Tim's. It's a very East Coast thing. Yeah. And I was like, this is like you not understanding like West Coast black people. That's it so was funny. nuts. And uh, he didn't take off those Tim's. Oh. He fucked me in those Tim's. What? He sure did. Wait, did he take the pants off and then put the Tim's back on? Or were the Tim's were the pants down? Okay. I just remember looking and I was like, Yo, I can't take off my Tim's. Tim's are in my Black Man Creed 365. I was like, what? You can't take off the Tim's, yo. Here's the thing about black people. The Tim's suction to their feet and they can't take them off. Uh, It keeps us going in bed. His name was Chris, and he wouldn't leave my house. So then I just like started FaceTiming my friend while he was like laying next to me. And he was like, cool, cool move. Wait, you like, wanted him to get up and leave? Yes. Damn, Nicole yes. is dirty out here. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm a person like, hey, this is what I committed to for the rest of the night. No. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to say get I have to go out. Get out <laughs> of <laughs> my house. The minute you leave my pussy, get out. I would love nothing more <laughs> Then a nice deep dicking. Uh, he comes, I come, he looks at me and I go, leave. And he says, yes. Yeah. As opposed to me smiling and being like, this, okay. Wow. Leave. Leave my home. And I can't tell you how many times I've like gone home with someone from a bar, fucked them, and then been like, see you later. And they're like, what? <laughs> You're not going to stay? Nah, bro, we did it. And they're like, thank you. <laughs> Jeez, that's 
Wow. So like, is what is like sex to you now? Is it like, do you think it's like, I don't know if we're getting too deep real quick, no. but like, is it like, a, you know, like a, you know how people like say fucking versus making love? Is have you? Do you still have the making love still in you? I don't know if I've ever made love to someone. Okay, I've I've fucked people, uh, but I've never. <laughs> Open up. I've this never been in love with Say someone space. I've had sex with. You've never been in love mm -mm. with someone you've had sex with. No. Have you been in love? No. Never been in love. Mm -mm. Have you been close? No. You've I've never been, been close. No, I've been infatuated with people. Uh, and I've had feelings that like I care about you. Yeah. And I've had someone say they loved me, and I went, "That's nice." Wow. <laughs> what in your when that happened? What triggered in your brain to be like, "Nah, I can't say this shit back." Well, we were like fucking, and he was like, "I love you," and I was like, "Well, you're inside me. That's wild." Like, sure, yeah, for right now. I hope now. you love me, shit. Yeah. And then he said it at a restaurant, and I went to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, wow. And then immediately it, after, like, I love yeah, you. Oh, he was like, well, no, I do like love you. Because I was like, you, because he's, okay, so he said I love you while he was fucking me. And he said I love you, like, when we were, like, in bed together. And then uh, we went to, like, this restaurant. And I was like, well, you said you loved me. And he was like, I do. And I was like, okay, well, I have to go to the bathroom. And then uh, I think that was only three times he said it. Oof. But, like, it, he didn't love me. And I knew he didn't love me. And I knew he was saying it in a manipulative way. So I was like, I'm not, oh. I'm not doing that. Oh. oh. So yeah, I've never been in love. Okay. Um, I also, we don't know each other at all, but I'll tell you this. I have like intimacy issues. I have okay. two dead parents. Wow. Oh. Um, my godmother's, uh, one of my godmothers is dead. Uh, oh. My grandmother's dead. My grandpa's dead. My aunts keep dying. So, like, people keep dying in my life. So, like, I have issues where I'm like, well, what's the point of getting close to people? They all just go and die. Wow. That's Which deep. is, like, not fun. But, no. I mean, that's just, like, my life. And then I get close to dudes that I meet, and then they, like, ghost me. So, I'm like, you're not dead, but, like, it's the you're, same thing. It's the same thing. thing happening over. Wow. So. Man, Nicole, that's not cool. No, it's not. But your girl's in therapy. Hey. Mary's helping me out. Shout out to Mary. Ba, 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 ba. Honestly, shout out to Mary. Mary's a fucking godsend. I, whew, I don't know what I would do without Mary. That's real. And shout out to my friend Marcy for finding Mary for me. Damn. Marcy was like, "You've got issues. I found you a therapist. Go to her." And I was like, "Thank you." I have so many questions, but like, I don't sure, want to get. You I, can. It's we? fine. Just like, well, how do you like? You've got so much weight on your shoulders. Like you've sure got this do. show. We're doing this podcast, and for you to <laughs> carry around that. Uh, also, sidebar: You're a black woman living in America, um, in Hollywood, uh -huh. in this crazy town. That's a lot. Like, I feel like you just. I feel like you want. I just want to hug you right now. That's not fair. And but that. Uh, oh wow! It's so. I'm yeah. just. It's hitting me all at the same time because it's like. The worst shit possible is happening to you, and also the best shit possible is happening to you at the same time. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. It is weird. My life has always been a lot of ups and downs. Like, anytime I've ever booked something or gotten good news, I've never been around people. And I'm like, I want to celebrate with somebody. I don't, I guess I'll be by myself, yeah. which is like also a weird thing. I also don't, I don't enjoy things. <laughs> Like, what? I don't enjoy success. I don't enjoy when things happen. Like, when my show got picked up, uh, my manager and my agent called me. And I was just like, okay, thank you. Bye-bye. And they were like, and then my manager called me and was like, well, aren't you, like, happy? And I was like, yes. And he was <laughs> like, okay. And I was like, okay. Bye-bye. And you, so what did you feel on the inside? Were I you was, like on to like what's the next thing I need to do? Or I was excited, but I also knew in the back of my head people take things away from people. Mm. So like I was super proud of the first season of my show, was really excited about it, and I was like, it's getting great feedback. People are writing nice stuff about it. We'll get a season two. And then it got canceled. And I was like, and I wasn't on to the next. I wasn't thinking ahead. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, I never want to be put in that position again. I never want to get comfortable with anything else again because things just get taken from you. Mm, so I like. I mean, that's one way of looking at it. 
Another way is that, hey, this is only the beginning of what is more sure, to come. Sure, but know? if I don't keep doing things, things won't happen, and then... Yeah, I got a lot of stuff on my. This is shoulders. beautiful. This is. The, I, have, I mean, you're not. I feel like you're not dealing with anything different, you know, than a lot of other people, you know. Sure. Yeah. Like my sister's different. She will shut down. She shuts down uh -huh. and then gets into a routine. Her routine is what keeps her comfortable and keeps her feeling safe. Yeah. Me, on the other hand, I'm like, well. I can't get too comfortable, and I don't want to ever feel safe. I have to keep doing things that make me have to work. Like, I just bought a house, so I'm like, I can't stop working ever. Right. I right. have to work for the rest of my life to pay off this fucking house. Not necessarily. Not, I mean, you'll get to a point. I feel like, you know, once you get that season three money, baby, mm, 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 mm. house paid for, season four, holla at me. I Come on mean... now. It's coming. I know it's got to. You're too fucking talented for that not to happen. Hey. That's nice. Thank you. <laughs> I, oh, my bad. The word's affirmation. I'm doing it. Uh, it's yeah, true, though. Well, okay, here's... I think this is why I don't like words of affirmation. You're beautiful. Okay. Beauty is subjective. So, I don't know if you're actually telling me the truth. Oh. <laughs> like you're, you're talented and funny. Mm -hmm. oh, that's also subjective. Are you saying that because other people have said it and it's been validated? Or do you actually think that? That's like when we're on a set and the director's like, great job. I'm like, is it? <laughs> you know, after a show at like UCB and everybody's like, oh, my God, so good. Oh, my God, you're amazing. Oh, my God, you're so great. You're so talented. Yes. That same thought came into it would always come to my mind of just like, oh, are, you, are they just bullshitting me right now? Like, why are they, you know, more than uh -huh. likely I was the only black guy on the stage. Are they just saying that because I'm a minority mm -hmm. and they have to feel free? Like, this is my one black doing, you know, today. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, oh, that's not fair. Like, they probably genuinely enjoyed an experience that they've never seen in their life. I mm -hmm. see this shit all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on the car, in the car, at home, in the mm -hmm. bathroom, in, in my sleep. But here I am saying that, hey, you're not supposed to feel that way mm -hmm. on this experience that I just provided you. You're wrong. And I don't want to do that to people. Yeah, I you know? try very hard to just take the compliment, just go, thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Okay. Because it is nice. And I... This is, this sounds like a humble brag, but like Girl Code, the show that I was on that like, you know, kind of, it was like my, my break. It's what people know me from. And it was an overnight thing where one day uh, people knew me at UCB and that's about it to having a hundred thousand like Instagram followers and like teen girls in malls being like, you're funny. I love you. Yeah. And I, it was just like very overwhelming and people would like ask me for pictures and then I started touring colleges and then like people would kind of mob me sometimes. And then I'd be like, I don't do that. I don't take pictures. I don't do it. I don't want to. And I don't want to talk to people. But then I like thought about it and I was like, okay, you just have to put a different face on and put away your demons in your mind. They're like, you're not actually funny. People are just, they just like you because like someone else told you, told them to like you or whatever. So now I'm like, I'll take a picture with anybody who asks and I will talk to anyone who wants to talk to me because they liked what they saw enough to make an effort to yeah. talk to me. Because it is an effort. It is an effort to talk to someone that you think is funny. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've, I, like, I don't know if I ever got to speak to Monique. Like, it would be genuine to be like, you have shaped my comedy. Like, you are who I looked at to be like, yeah. you're a big black woman talking about getting your pussy eaten. That's funny to me. That's okay. what I want to do. Absolutely. So, I don't know. What were we talking about? I didn't take my ADD medicine today. Tinder. It's an amazing app. Make sure you download it, guys. Bumble Fucking also. Tinder. Okay. So here's, well, I guess I have my answer because I always ask my guests, I go, oh. would you date me or why won't you date me? But you would date me because you swipe right on me. I Actually, mean, I don't know. Can, can, I, can, I, can I say something? Yes. I can answer the question for myself. Yeah, I guess I date you. You're cool. You're just yeah. You're cool. It would it would. I know. I feel like looking at it, it would be like, it's gonna be some work. It's gonna be some like. It's gonna be some time where it'd be like, oh, that's not Nicole talking. That's like that's some shit she's going through right now. So uh -huh. I have to humble myself a whole lot. Uh. But then it would also bring about stuff. It would be like an awareness piece for me too. It's like, well, Warren, why do you feel that way? And it'd mm -hmm. be very interesting. So yeah, I'd be down for the challenge. Yeah. So what was your intention with your first message? My intention was really just to, like, strike up a conversation. Like, I have done the whole, like, oh, my God, look at this person. I'm thinking about babies with this person. We can probably have three, maybe four babies. Do you want children? I do want children. We'll never work out. Oh. 
Okay. I don't want any children. Zero? No. I bought a really nice house, and I don't want children to fuck it up. Okay. They break shit. You're going to change that. Maybe. Uh, that's what people say. I'm 31. Yeah, that, you, you still got some time. No. We're still in the beginning. Your eggs go bad. Your what? ovaries fall out. Your uterus dries up. I'm your sorry. cervix uh, fucking bottoms out. What's, like, the, what's the thing, Beyonce? Well, no, Beyonce didn't do it. I mean, it's just, it's rumored. <laughs> the people, what the celebrities get. Oh, a surrogate? Is this, no, not surrogate. Oh, in vitro? Which, in vitro. Why you get twins, right? No. I, here's the thing. I do not want a baby. Goo goo gaga. I have to bring it everywhere. Uh-huh. I can leave my dogs at home in a crate. No you can't baby at all. Do that with a baby. You have to pay someone to hang out with that thing. No one's gonna do it for free. I don't have parents to take care of a baby. Gotcha. So like, I'm, I just bring them to my grand or my parents' house. My parents are dead. So like, I'd have to go find their ashes somewhere and fucking leave the baby there. And then people will be mad about that because I left the baby with dead people. And then <laughs> this is so weird to laugh at, and I can't. I wish you. All right. You can laugh at it. No, 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 no. Because no, no. like people say, like I don't know. So people don't want to laugh at tragedy, but like when we emptied or spread my dad's ashes, we were fighting over who would do it, and I snatched it out of my sister's hand. I was like, I'll fucking do it. And as I sprinkled him, a big gust of wind came, and he blew in my mouth. And then my grandmother, I've never seen her laugh harder than that moment. And then I was like, my dad's in my mouth. My dad's in my mouth. It was awful. My mouth was full of dead person ash. Full of it. There's like so much dark humor that goes into it. And I can't talk about it on stage yet because I'm trying to, uh, it's hard. Oh, yeah, no, I'm trying to me. conquer talking about being fat because people feel bad for you. So that's what I'm doing first, and then I'll get to my dead daddy see, being in my mouth. I don't, in my opinion, you like you, and I've noticed that too. I, I was born in Chicago. And Where in Chicago? Southside, High Park. That's where my sister lives. Really? Yeah, and then my High grandparents, Park? yeah, she lives in High Park. Really? She lives in like 57th and Ellis? like Lakeshore Drive. Oh, wow, yeah. And I'm then about, my grandparents, I live on, uh, we were like 51st and uh, Ellis. Okay. Yeah. My grandparents live at like 91st and Stony Island. What? That's where my grandparents Take live. that Jeffrey Express down. What you know about it? Dan Ryan. <laughs> Chicago stand up. Chirac stand up. Chi yeah, City. they live on like Euclid. Euclid and. Okay. What is that? I don't fucking it's know. It's in the hood. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. And hey. then, uh, let's see. My aunt lives on like Halstead and 107 oh. by the park. Nicole, you are in the hood for real. That's Oh, great. yeah. The That's fucking good. hood. The hood. The to hood. the point where I didn't think white people lived in Chicago. Yeah. And when white people would say, oh, I'm from Chicago, I'd be like, you're obviously from a suburb. Exactly. And then two years ago, three years ago, went to the north side and was scandalized. I was like, oh, yeah. they are here. It is the most successfully segregated city it in America. It is the number one segregated city. It, it's so it's ridiculous. Every time I meet a white wild. person who's like, I'm from Chicago too, it's like, I have no clue where they're from. No, I they're from the north about... side or Old Town Wrigleyville. You know where yeah, the cops are. Yeah, and like... Wicker Park. We like to go get our vegan blueberry muffins there. And like, well, Yeah, okay. it's wild, cool. but I, I don't. This is going to sound awful. I hate Old Town. I hate the north side. I love the South Side. Me There's something too, so Nicole. Come on, just like real and visceral yes. and like the North Side seems so Hollywood, so yes. like they it's not real. Like the side, there are so many genuine, real ass, like really real yes. people, and people in the will South just side. like tell you what's up. And my so like <sighs> when Trump says things like I'm gonna send the National Guard in, and people are killing each other. I'm like, well, honestly, all you have to do is like fun public schools there because nobody joins a gang because of too many after school activities. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody's fucking running the streets at night because they have to wake up and take a test in the morning because they're at a good school where teachers care about them. It's like you kind of have to like go backwards and start like at the root of the problem. But it's like, well, you don't want to do that because they're all black and you want to keep them at a disadvantage. What a wild twist this podcast has taken. This has been great. We touched on a lot. <sighs> we did. This. Okay, so... Do you have anything that you want to plug? Uh, sure. I mean, every Sunday, come on down to the Ground League Theater. I'll be performing there in the Sunday Company. Uh, look out for me in the new AT and T commercial, McDonald's commercial. Brat, brat. That's cool. I love how you said the new AT and T commercial, and 
the new McDonald's commercial. New. Like they roll out a new one once a right. year. Yeah. They're like the new season of commercials is coming. Here they come. You're gonna get one the for this new, month. <laughs> the season one commercials of these huge corporations. But no, I'm just around. And then hopefully on some other show. Oh, don't you know do that. Saying? Warren, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. It's been such a true treat. Um, if you listen to this podcast on iTunes and you really liked it, I want you to rate it five stars. And along with your rating, if you hit on me or say something very sexually disgusting, I will read it aloud on the next podcast. An example is... Uh, I want to cut up your chocolate pussy pie and eat it. Or, um, ooh, man, I want to squeeze your titties and twist off the nip. Or, uh, baby girl, I want you to back that ass up. You a big, fine woman. I want you to back that ass up into my dick. One more. So, uh, <laughs> One more. One more. One more. Usually I read them, but I couldn't find enough to read. Oh, okay. So I'm just spitting them off the dome. Okay, here's another one. Uh, I want I want to stick my finger so deep in your butt you become a puppet. <laughs> and that's what the puppet would sound like with that laugh. That's great. That's good. Thank you so much. For being Nicole, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Oh, really bye bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast.